Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Oh, okay. One of them's a liar. So, like, now someone's ringing the door, but who is it? Today in this video, I'll be reacting to three hostel nightmare, true hostel horror stories from Mr. Nightmare. And I've not done a reaction video to a creepypasta in a while, so I thought, why not do one today? I love these videos. Let's just wait with it and let's react to the video. Okay, so we are watching now. Our guests share a multi-bed dormitory. They do indeed, a hostel. Often the beds are in the form of bunk beds. Yep. I've never been to a hostel before, everyone. We need to move here. For a cheaper alternative to hotels and Airbnbs. Yep. These rooms can be single or mixed gender. Mm-hmm. And they can have private or shared bathrooms. I don't know what's going to happen because anyone could be in here. You don't know who you're sleeping with at all. Anything could happen. Only really plan on using the place to sleep and not really hang out. Yep. The three stories you're about to hear were recounted by solo travelers. True horror stories. Great experiences with the people they were sharing their rooms with. Oops. Story one by TL. Oh dear, what's gonna happen to TL? I was for a while talking to this French girl that I managed mm -hmm. to get some dating app after my breakup. Oh, okay. We were texting for a while. Getting in with the dating. We each other almost every night. We connected really Paris. well. Paris. But she came from a strict family who she still lived mm -hmm. with. So when the idea of me visiting her came up, she made it clear she wouldn't be able to host me. And when I asked okay. if she'd want to share a hotel room together, she said not the first couple nights after we met, just because her parents would have a freak out. So, so since I was only twenty three, guess and I went to that hostel. Stopped. I booked to stay at a hostel not far from her. Hostel. I downloaded a couple mm -hmm. movies to watch on the seven hour flight since I already knew seven I to sleep. hour I never flight. Flights. And I was right. Never and been I on a plane before, but I don't know if I'll be able to cope seven hours. So by the time I landed in an Uber to the hostel, I was running on zero hours of sleep within the past oh, goodness. twenty four hours. What is going to happen? I was exhausted. Right. Due to the six hour time difference. It was also like three in the morning. Mm -hmm. So at least that meant I could just go crazy. Three in the morning. And I wouldn't be Terrifying. The I arrived to the hostel, which right. admittedly wasn't the nicest. It arrived there. It was small. There was a certain odor to the lobby. The front desk Musty. worker wasn't too enthusiastic about his Not job. good. But it was 3 a.m. after all, so I had to True. cut the slack. Everyone's not going to be happy as Larry at three o'clock in the morning, are they? Six beds, five of them empty. Wow. But one had a guy sitting on it. Oh. He was on his laptop, typing away at something. He looked up at me, then back down at his laptop. I said, hey, but he didn't respond back. Rude. He seemed invested in what he was doing. He's like typing Someone away. I... Down in one of the He's like... Beds. But the light to the room was still on. I asked him if it was okay that I shut off the light. No, you can't. He looked at me with a blank expression, but didn't say anything. Was that yes or no? I repeated what I said, assuming he didn't hear me. And he nodded his head with this weird smile. Oh. So I got up and turned off the lights to the room. I would be I not in a dark with that man. He sounds very creepy. Sleep, but surprisingly, I woke up a couple hours later. Okay. The room was still dark, but I didn't know for sure what woke Is me up. Is he still there? That I man? I to my side and looked around the room. It was almost pitch black, but it's... I could see that all the beds were empty. All oh. of them. Where was the other guy that was Where is he? Earlier? Where's he gone? The two bunk beds next to me were empty. Right. And bottom. But I knew something had to have woken me up. Where is the man? Phone and it was five in the morning. I needed sleep. Guesses, so where is he? Underneath the bed or on top of his bunk? Maybe sound from out in the hall woke me up. Who knows? I back down on my side and closed my eyes. Right. The mild traffic noises from outside was all that I heard. Then the bed shook a bit. Oh. I heard a little crack of the metal frame. Accompanied with this freakish breathing sound. Where is he? In horror. And on top of me. I saw a head peering over the edge of the top <gasps> bunk, looking into the bottom bunk. Oh, no. I see the same creepy smile on his face, and his medium to longish black hair was drooping down that with gravity below the top of his head as he hung upside down. It was a horror. What's he doing? That words really can't explain. I would be screaming. I screamed and fell off the bed as I realized what I was looking at. He sat up in the top bunk and continued looking at me. I screamed what the it just doesn't doing speak. as I threw something at him. Uh he started to laugh this really strange off-putting laugh. Oh. I immediately turned the light on. I'd be getting out of there. I'd be like, bye, Felicia. Holly! Goodbye. Bye, Felicia! Go! Holly! Edna, bye, Felicia! I'm watching him at the same time. I then heard a click of a phone camera and looked at him uh, as he was holding his phone up to me. Why is he taking pictures? He's taking a picture of me. 
he was still laughing while looking at me. Oh, this is creepy. Something's wrong with this man. Yeah, very. I didn't know if he had some screws loose mentally, or if he was doing this with bad intentions. What he's gonna do? I zipped up my bag and went to the front desk and requested a different room immediately. Yeah. One of the single private rooms. After explaining why and trying to get a reduced rate, he wouldn't budge. Ah. But he said he'd check on the room with the guest that I was just in. Right. I didn't call the police because I didn't know if any laws were broken. But I sure as hell left a review of the hostel. The rest of my trip there was so... good. I had a good time with the girl I was seeing. But oh. every time I returned to the hostel, I was scared I'd run into that guy. I don't like how a picture of me is on that weirdo's phone. No. I'm not a physical guy. So over here we have this creepy dude who physical. takes pictures of people and terrifies people in the night. When he's like creeping over, he's banister. Um, to look underneath the bed. Uh, very scary, very creepy. Next story too is by Brian, I think he says. I'm a solo traveler. I've stayed in countless hostels as a means of okay. saving money while also meeting new interesting people. I've stayed in a total of about 20 hostels in my life. That's a lot of hostels. Of the time I've had good experiences. But obviously, truly awful experience 20 out of 1. It's a place called Freedom Traveler Hostel. Before I begin, Let's not go to there everyone. Freedom Traveler, we're not going there. Itself. The Freedom Traveler Hostel is located in Rome. Oh. It was my first time well, I don't think I'll be going to Rome anytime soon, so it's all good. To the landscape yeah. I heavily on Google Maps and locals. In fact, even finding the hostel itself proved challenging. As Very there were difficult. No for the place outside. That is sketchy. The place, I let myself in through the is this it? Doors, is that what we're looking at? By a nice woman working the front counter. At least he's got a nice lady who works there, I guess. One of the four-person rooms. I was led to the room I'd be staying in. Need some water, had hydration. Bed and two single beds, totaling sleeping space for four people. The room had a green theme to it. Oh. It was the biggest room. The worker told me there weren't many people staying in the hostel at the moment, which I didn't really have a problem with if it would mean I would have more privacy in the room. Maybe you just got your own room. The woman had a smile on her face the entire time, and I appreciated her help. She showed me where I could store my Too kind, should we say? Too kind. Back garden area. I wasn't impressed nor confident with it, so I decided I'd leave my luggage in the room. Especially yeah. Especially since I didn't bring anything too valuable. I was exhausted. It's a nice back garden, right? Nice back so garden. Changing clothes and oh! the bed and laid down ready to take a power nap. Not long after, I heard a knock at the door, and two young men walked in. Oh no. They had thick Italian accents. I could tell right away. What is going to happen? They greeted me and started talking to me. Oh, they're nice people. Nap, but I'm polite and social. So I was friendly and chatted with them. Mm -hmm. They introduced themselves as Marco and Lucio. Brothers. Well, Marco and Lucio. Marco had to be like 6'4". He was huge. That's very Lucio tall. That's like the door. But he wasn't a toothpick either. And I could see the resemblance in their faces. Right. And what are these two men up to? What do they want? I'm guessing they're showing your hostel bodies. with you. They weren't the friendliest looking guys. Oh, right. First, they seemed okay enough. Terrifying then. After getting acquainted mm -hmm. in English with them. The two brothers started to talk amongst themselves in Italian. They didn't know that I understood, though, because right oh. away I understood them to be talking about me, oh. laughing at me. I heard, I believe, Marco describing me as some silly white boy. Oh. I could have said something right there in Italian. That's quite rude. Instead, I wanted to keep the illusion that I didn't speak yeah. language. Yeah, good thinking, the smart thinking. The actually got up from their beds and left the room, with Lucio smiling and waving at me as they left. I just realized yeah, they like, didn't have their luggage in the room. He knows. Which led me to believe they left their luggage and in the room. And I know he knows. The garden area. But I know he knows. I went to the for a bit, just Rome. Some of the people sitting out there. And I met a few nice tourists who were also staying there for the weekend. Right. Then off I went to explore the city. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Go. Bye, Felicia. I know. City center. After many hours and two food What is going to happen with these two brothers? The no idea. Some people to be socializing the lounge area mm -hmm. or the back garden. What's going to happen with the two brothers? No so I figured I'd just get some early shut eye. It was 9 p.m. anyway. Right. I don't remember when I fell asleep, but I remember waking up. Any 9 p.m. The lights in the room were still off. Oh. I heard whispering voices. The brothers were back. <gasps> I didn't move. I listened to what Pretend they were to be saying, asleep. Still speaking in Italian. What are they going to say? One of them whispered something that roughly translated to, just grab it, <gasps> or are you going to do it? I didn't know what it meant. Uh, your stuff, probably. We were talking about my luggage. Yeah. I was waiting to hear the sound of my luggage being moved before I would let them know I was awake. But instead, I felt a sweet smelling, cold and wet cloth being pressed up <gasps> to my face. And I reacted by yelling and swatting it off my face. Oh my God. To see one of the brothers standing over me. I screamed, what are you doing? What the? 
man over me. I couldn't tell which one it was. Then got on the lower bed with me and tried to subdue me. Oh my goodness. And screamed for help. The other brother pulled him away from me, and the two men took off out of the room. What the hell? I quickly grabbed my bag. They're and trying to drug him. To ask for help. The man who was working what? there said he saw the two guys leave, but there was no information on them even staying there. Uh, they were two random locals who were trying to rob visitors to the hostel. Oh my they god. They literally chloroform me. They did? I didn't stay there after that, of course. I'm sure they've upped their security now. D but when I, I hope stayed so. there, clearly anybody could have just walked right in. Well, I will not be saying very many times soon, everybody. Robbed of my entire bag. After this, I started being more careful of the hostels I stay at. Mm hmm Well, I hope you've had great experiences from then on because that sounds absolutely terrifying. I'd never go back to a hostel again. Last story three is by Courtney. I once went to Miami Beach oh, by Miami. Basel, by yourself. The cold. My friend Mia would be there with her boyfriend and I'd oh, meet up nice. with them, but I wasn't staying with them. Yeah. Hotels and Airbnbs in Miami aren't cheap though, especially no. if you're flying solo. So I went with this hostel called Bikini Hostel. Bikini Bottom. It's like in the heart of Miami Beach and it was pretty crowded. Who is going to be staying in Bikini people. Bottom then? It had a younger vibe, mostly people in their 20s. Okay. Some people seemed to be there in groups, others solo like me. I didn't spend too much time in the hostel, though. No, so you're very Miami. Spend some time having fun. At least have lockers that you could put your bags in. So I was able to be gone the entire day with peace of mind. It wasn't until that Cheers first that. night that I returned and met some of the people in the room with me. A bikini it hostel, a cafe, and beer garden. Both male and females. Though I was actually... But I don't look very, um... I wasn't necessarily presenting just it like you'd want to go really there for the people more so just the money saved yeah and about three of the however many people were actually staying in the room the next morning i woke up and first thing i did was look for my phone which i thought i left on the bed i looked all over the bed and then under it <gasps> someone in the room had to have taken someone it. stolen a phone everybody if anybody had it i asked the guy in the bed next to me to call my number and see if we could hear it ring but no one could. <sighs> I started to question if maybe Somebody I didn't bring it back to the room after all. Stolen I borrowed the same guy's phone. This to person's my phone. Tell her I lost my phone and to meet me at the brunch place we wanted to hit. Stolen. I checked the entire room one last time. Find my iPhone. Desk and asked them to call find me your phone. Is he going to find his phone? phone? I hope he does. Then I left to meet Mia at this place on Collins Avenue to get brunch with her and her boyfriend. Yep. While there, brunch. I used Mia's phone to sign into iCloud to check find my iPhone. Precisely. It said the last known location was at the hostel two hours ago. <gasps> that gave me some form of relief mm. because maybe I left it in my bag where the It's in the hostel. Something. Which we person has snatched it? everywhere in the room. Who said the you're coming home with me and took the phone? Absolutely no sense. But I wasn't gonna let it ruin my trip. No. We walked to the convention center, which was where the art Basel was being held. After leaving, hours later, we grabbed a late lunch. Or I mean, I would dinner, be going back to the hostel and being like, afterwards. "Give me my phone back." At some point, I checked find my iPhone on Mia's phone again, and this time it said my phone had moved. <gasps> where is it? Basically, right on top of us. Mia and her boyfriend joke about me being sure I don't have it on me. I told them. Is I somebody stalking them? them? I looked around for anyone. Who oh my might goodness! Have is somebody stalking them? What would I even look for? Oh my goodness! I put my phone into lost mode now that I knew someone had it. Mia's boyfriend screamed out, "Did anybody find a lost phone?" But no one came forward. No. So everyone looked at us, and some people left. That's for sure. We tried calling my phone a bunch of times, and though it would ring, no one picked up. No. I went back to the hostel oh. when it was dark out to change clothes. As I was walking back, I right. was starting to accept that maybe my phone wasn't going to be returned to me. No. My entire walk back. It sucks, so isn't it? It's like a job property. The guy was following me. He took every single same turn I took. He's got your phone. I don't think he noticed that I noticed. But no. I was very suspicious. But he he's got your phone. Me. I know he's got your phone. I got back to the room. I went on my laptop. He's definitely got your phone. To check find my iPhone again. And now the location Wendy's back iPhone. Back I was excited um, because I thought maybe they were returning it. Maybe. I checked the front desk though, and nothing. I think I he's there with you. People in the hostel too. No one had it. He's there. At least they weren't admitting to it. Mm -hmm. So I went to Instagram on my laptop and started DMing Mia to keep her updated. Oh. Would I be ready to meet? Who them? has got the I phone? To take a quick shower Who has got it? To more going out appropriate attire. Right. When I came out from the bathroom and back into the room, I was shocked to see that man that I thought was following me was sitting in one of the beds on his phone. He's got your phone. There were two other guys in the room with us at that moment, but I had a scary thought, so I hurried to DM Mia to call my phone right now. <gasps> she said okay, 
and then I heard the sound of a phone vibrating and a pocket oh. on a bed. I looked up at the guy, who suspiciously looked back at me at the same time as if he knew. Hey, he's got the phone. Everything. I started yelling, give me my phone, exclaiming, I got you, to him. The other two guys in the room helped me and demanded the guy empty his pockets and give yep. me my phone. He listened and took out a phone. Sure enough, my phone. <gasps> I snatched it from his hand. Snatch. And told the other two guys that he had been following me all day and was purposely avoiding returning my phone. He, he was. He has your was. phone. Give it back. I got up and hurried out of the building. With yeah. Backpack. Go Before away. I made friends with the two guys who helped me. Their names were Mark and Paulo. Mark and Paulo. They come out with me to meet up with me. Thank you very much. I'm grateful they were there because I wonder how things would have played out differently. Precisely. I also recommend keeping your phone and valuables in a very safe yep. place if you ever stay in a hostel. And just generally be aware of the people around you. 100%. That is the end of the video, everybody. The hostel video. Um, Obviously, we have the first one. What happened on the first one? Oh, we had the scary man who was looking over people. And he was, like, being terrifying. Absolutely scary. The second one we had was... Um, oh, the drug one where he tried to steal her, his luggage. And the third one was the phone. Like, the third one was probably the most, like, wow. Like, why, why would you why steal people's property? Don't do that. No, 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 no. Um, I do hope you all have enjoyed this video, everybody. I do want to say thank you all very much for watching this video. And I will see you lot all next time for a brand new video. Bye-bye, everyone. Oh, okay. One of them's a liar. So, now someone's ringing the doorbell. Who is it? <laughs>